Okay, I think we'll get started. My name is Ross Yelsey. I'm an Assistant Director of Admission and Marketing at Columbia Journalism School. I'd like to thank you all for attending this webinar today. And I'm put in the chat right now a link to our upcoming uh, admissions and uh, financial aid webinars that we'll be doing in the fall. We'll be adding more as we go, but for now, you can look at this link. And I know some of you might be looking at different programs that we have at our school. So I just wanted to outline the different ones uh, very briefly before we start. We have our Master of Science degree, which is available in full-time and part-time options. And that's kind of the um, broader, more flexible degree that allows you to gain all the fundamental skills in journalism and also kind of focus on areas that matter to you, whether it's you know certain mediums or certain subjects. We also have a dual MS in journalism and computer science for people who want to spend two years here, uh, taking classes both here and also in the computer science department at the School of Engineering, uh, where you're building applications and other types of software to work in kind of media and journalism fields. And we also have a Master of Arts for uh, experienced journalists who want to gain kind of stronger reporting skills in one of four concentrations, arts and culture, business and economics, politics, and science. And we also have for people looking in an academic career path, a PhD PhD in communications. But today we're here to talk about the Master of Science in Data Journalism, a relatively new program at the school. And I'm really happy to have two faculty members in the program, Jonathan Soma and Drew Mometa with us today, as well as my colleague, Edwin Isaac, uh, Associate Director of Admission and Financial Aid, who's here, who will be uh, monitoring the chat. Right now, we're gonna keep the chat uh, closed. And then uh, after we talk over some of the key questions with, um, John, uh, with Soma and uh, Drew Mull, we will then have Edwin um, look at the chat and raise some of the questions that that you have put in there. And I'd say, please direct those only to Edwin's uh, yeah, chat function when that's open. The rest of us would love to answer your questions, but the easiest way is to have Edwin take those uh, to the rest of us during the, the Q&A period. So I think we'll start with a discussion just about um, the backgrounds of both of our faculty members, uh, Soma and Drumal. Could you tell us a bit about your own path into data journalism? What kind of got you into this particular field? And what kind of uh, makes you think that data is a good way to tell a story? So I'm going to push this one to Drumal first, just because my, I start talking a little bit about academics at the end of mine. Um, and so if, Drumal, if you wouldn't mind going sure. first. Yeah. Uh, so I um, did not study journalism as an undergraduate. I studied philosophy and computer science. Um, and I ended up getting a master's in computer science. And I was a software engineer for a little while at Amazon. Um, but quickly was able to pivot to journalism. I found an opportunity at 538. Um, I had been doing some sort of quantitative social science work for my thesis and some journal, I met some journalists and sort of eventually became one. Um, and so I worked at 538 as a data journalist covering politics for seven years. Um, I built a lot of their politics uh, infrastructure. So I was still doing sort of software engineering, building databases, stuff like that. But I was also writing, reporting, talking to politicians. Uh, and, and sort of learned um, how to do a lot of that journalism stuff on the job. Um, I would say it was a very different time uh, for the industry when I when I first entered. Um, there weren't a ton of people who had both the ability to write software and code and also uh, report out news. And I think now um, more and more there are programs like this and there are candidates who sort of have all of those things. Um, and, and so um, that's why I think a program like this is more important now than it was back then if you wanted to get into the field. Yeah, I definitely agree, because back then there were like five people and you could just kind of walk out into journalism and say, I know how to program. And then suddenly you would you would get the jobs. Um, so my background similarly isn't anchored in journalism. Um, I went to school for undergrad for computer science, but I hated the way that it was taught so much that I dropped out of the computer science program. Um, tried to major in English, ended up doing something kind of, you know, in the middle between the two of those. Um, but really what I bring to the program in terms of uh, my teaching philosophy is very much the way that computer science exists, the way that computer science is taught um, is very unfriendly to the way that journalists like to do things and the way that journalists like to learn. Uh, so I focus everything on being very, very practical. Um, because even though I came from computer science, I kind of fell backwards into journalism. I started doing uh, some work for uh, WMIC, NPR in New York City, uh, New York Times, ProPublica, uh, mostly working on like big systems that they have uh, that they would use in order to produce journalism. 
Great, thanks. And uh, as I mentioned, the MS in Data Journalism is a relatively new program. I think it's in its about third year um, at Columbia. I thought I'd ask Soma about why um, it's been important, do you think, to have a degree specifically on this type of journalism and kind of what the purpose of the training is in this degree program? Yeah, so uh, learning to code is, is pretty difficult. Uh, learning to be a journalist is also pretty difficult. So uh, the normal MS program here, two semesters, packed full of stuff, right? When people are learning journalism, they're doing things every day, um, trying to learn to code and trying to apply all of those skills to journalism. Uh, in that same time that you're trying to learn all of the things that have to do with journalism, so difficult, so hard. Um, so by having a program that is three semesters long, we definitely have enough time to both introduce you to the programming, get you comfortable with data analysis, visualization, all of that, while also making sure that you get the kind of in-depth uh, journalism reporting, all of that stuff that also comes along with getting an MS in journalism. Cool. And there's a question for both of you is, you know, what kind of um, applicant or what kind of student would you say is this program best suited for? What kind of experience should they already have coming into the program, whether that's journalism experience or, you know, coding or compute computational experience? So we start from zero. Um, we don't assume that you know anything about programming, anything about computers. I always say if you can turn a computer on, then that's that's good enough. That's all we're really asking for. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's really just you need to have a curiosity. You need to have a <clears throat> drive that will enable you to you know get through three semesters of you know a difficult graduate program where we're throwing new things at you all the time. Um, and it, it really just boils down to that passion and that dedication. And a lot of people come in very intimidated by the programming aspects, very intimidated by the journalism aspects. Um, but as long as you have kind of that heart and that ability to learn new things and absorb new things and, you know, do your homework and come to class and all of that, I have faith that pretty much anyone would be fine coming through the program. Cool. Drumble, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, some of my students have a bit of a reporting background that are totally new to data, but we also have some students who like, like me, sort of used to be a software engineer and now are trying to get into journalism. And I would say that both groups of people um, have something to gain from, from the program. Um, and, you know, just knowing how to code doesn't mean you know how to apply that to reporting. And, and there's a lot of sort of core journalism principles there. So, so I'd say, um, yeah, pe people coming from either background looking to sort of cross-pollinate uh, will we'll get something out of the program, I think. Great, another uh, kind of big question for you both. Um, like what would you describe data journalism as being uh, as opposed to other types of journalism? And what are kind of the key skills you feel like you need to have to do it well? Yeah. Or a you got it. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm still figuring out what data journalism means, um, but, but I think that the conclusion I've come to is it's just journalism with different with a different skill set. So I, I don't think it's some sort of magical new unicorn thing. It's just that as a journalist, in order to sort of effectively navigate a lot of the types of problems that we have uh, in this era, you also need to be numerate and you need to know, you know, especially I think COVID has made it really clear that like you need to have some baseline level of numeracy in order to effectively um, be a journalist. Um, and so I think this is like, I would say data journalism is just, a, it's, it's a journalist that has more of those skills, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like to say that uh, it's, it's all the same skills as journalism, but instead of interviewing a person, you're interviewing a spreadsheet. Uh, if I lived in Texas, a large Spanish speaking population there, it would be useful if I spoke Spanish, right? Because then I could talk to many more people. Same thing with being a data journalist, by being able to speak data you know, be numerate, program in whatever language or use Excel or any of those things. It's just opening you up to a whole new world of sources that you can get information from. Great. And Soma, maybe you could help us um, kind of understand the structure of the MS data journalism curriculum, how it kind of unfolds over those three semesters and how you build both the journalistic kind of reporting skills and then also the coding and other kind of data analysis skills. Yeah, so uh, in the first year or two of the program, uh, we kind of front loaded all of the data and then you had two semesters that was pretty much all journalism. 
Um, but once COVID happened, you know, we kind of shifted the program around. We use it as an opportunity to change things up. And so pretty much what happens is every semester you are taking a set of data focused classes and a set of journalism focused classes. So as you go through the program, you're learning a bit of both every single semester. Uh, your first semester is based on kind of getting the basics down, the fundamentals of programming, data analysis. I like to say that once you're finished with uh, that semester, you can Google your way out of any problem that you have. Um, then when you hit the second semester, you start to apply those skills, you're building projects, you're doing more visualization, you're doing more intense data analysis. Um, later on, you start to move into things like machine learning. Uh, you start to understand how, let's say, algorithms work. You start to apply these sorts of things uh, in your own work. And uh, yeah, at, at the end, you're, uh, you know everything that's, that's ever happened ever, except that's not true. Uh, this kind of tech is always changing and always new things are coming out, new approaches. And so we really give you the foundations that you can also self-study after the program to kind of always be improving, always get uh, more and more skills. Great. Could you tell us a bit about some of the software or specific things you focus on when it comes to the kind of technical skills that people will, will learn over the course of the, the program? Yeah, so when you're talking about, we, we mostly focus on coding. So you can do many of these things in Excel and other spreadsheet programs, which you know a lot of journalists do. But we figure you're coming to grad school for you know a full year, you might as well get real deep into programming. In the programming world, there are two major kind of uh, journalistic programming languages you can use. One is Python and one is R. We focus on Python. Um, so you'll be using Python to do data analysis, you'll be using Python to scrape, uh, you'll be sharing your code online. It's just, we can get super, super deep into this. Um, if you have specific questions about the kind of tech that we do or don't use, um, feel free to shoot me an email. It's just jsome at columbia.edu. But I don't want to bore all the people who are, uh, uh, you know, not necessarily knee deep in, in all the technology. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I guess I would add that, you know, a lot of students ask me, like, what should I learn Python or R? And I, I think it serves the wrong question, like learning one gives you the fundamental skills to learn the other. Um, so, you know, once you've picked up one, it's, it's much easier to figure out the other one. And, and these technologies, like Soma said, they keep changing, like there'll be something new in a couple of years. Thanks. Yeah, programming is just programming. And, you know, once you get your teeth into it, especially in terms of using it for data analysis or data visualization. You can kind of go wherever you'd like with that. Cool. And Drew Mill, you mentioned that today you're teaching a course later on data visualization with the class, the current class. Maybe can you tell us a bit about what that um, lesson will entail and some of the things yeah. that they kind of pick up on that uh, aspect of the, the curriculum? Yeah, so the, the class is called Reporting 2, and it's sort of the intro, uh, you know, there's there's two intro reporting classes. One really focuses on that on the ground shoe leather reporting, and the other one is very data focused, which is the one that I teach. Um, and, and students are taking both of those simultaneously. And so today um, we have a guest lecturer, Julia Wolf, who is a senior, senior data uh, visualization editor at 538. Um, she's coming and teaching students sort of the principles of data visualization. Um, they're also currently working on a data-driven reporting project. And so, you know, they'll she'll give the lecture, they'll practice those skills in class, and then when they go back um, and work on their project, they're going to incorporate data visualization into the reporting that they're doing. Great. And Soma, uh, you know, I know everyone is learning all these different techniques and skills throughout the course, but kind of overarching the whole degree program, as for all Master of Science students uh, in our school, there's going to be something called a master's project that every student will embark on. Could you talk a little bit about what that is and kind of what that will entail for data students? Sure. Uh, so the master's project, you spend, uh, let's say, about two semesters working on it. Um, it is your experience in crafting like a large format story that you spend a lot of time doing research, doing the reporting. Um, for data students, it's a lot of tracking down data, trying to analyze things. Um, as you pick up new skills throughout the course of the program, you might immediately turn around and apply it to your master's project. Uh, you might come into class one day and learn how to do some sort of geographic analysis or mapping or a way to make computers convert PDFs to text, anything like that, and then turn around and say, oh, hey, I can use this in my master's project. 
Uh, and so it is a, you know, just a very large project you work on under the guidance of a master's project advisor, and you just end up with a, with a big story. And it is kind of your capstone project here, and it's the thing that you will uh, dedicate a, a decent number of your credit hours to. Um, so in addition to any like smaller clips that might be produced in a you know, classroom environment, this is your chance to really shine, really show off your skills, really kind of uh, flex the muscles that you've developed over the course of the program. Great. And um, after you complete all of this, finish your degree, basically people are thinking about what, what happens next. Could you talk about uh, some of the paths of our recent graduates of the data program and where they've landed so far? You can do anything is what it boils down to. And it's a lot of it is what you're passionate about. Um, so our program is focused on being maybe more uh, analysis heavy than other programs. Uh, an alternative to something like this might be focused more on web development or visualization or, or something like that. But we spend a lot of time with the data, doing research, doing analysis, um, digging in deep. And so I like to think there are a few major paths. Um, you can head in the direction where you join, let's say, a graphics team, and you're making maps, you're making visualizations. Um, you're also you know, writing stories along with that, but it is very much visual. Maybe they're interactives, maybe they're not interactives. Um, you can go in a more investigative or research position where you kind of, the idea is like you're hiding in a, a basement all day, um, combing through all of these like document leaks or database dumps or things like that and uncovering wrongdoing and publishing pieces like that. Um, or you can just be, you know, like a daily news reporter where, you know, you're, you're pulling in spreadsheets of crime data or, uh, you know, just anything that's on your beat. Education beats uh, are very heavy with data. Um, and you're just kind of kind of cranking out stories there. So it really spans the gamut in terms of the way that you can apply these skills. And there's no one path that comes out of being a journalist. It's just, it's very flexible. And you can use all these skills kind of in any direction that you want to go. Great. And then I thought I'd ask both of you, um, you know, this is a kind of challenging program, a lot of different things you're going to try to uh, to learn about over the course of these three semesters. What kind of mindset or kind of preparation would be helpful to kind of succeed when you're actually in the school? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, if you've encountered data before and you have been afraid, um, that is that is something that uh, you know, we, we try to help students sort of overcome in the first couple of weeks. Um, so I think what, a good attitude to have is just, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and do it. Like you're at school. It's not like you're on deadline for a really important piece. You have room to sort of fail and practice and learn. Um, and, and so I, I would say, you know, if, if you have thought that you are bad at math, um, I thought for much of my life until about halfway through college that I was bad at math. Um, in some ways, I still am bad at math. I almost failed out of math in, in college too, um, did very poorly in, in high school. So all that to say, like, I don't know, we get these signals from society that there are math people and not math people, and that's just not true. Um, and so, you know, really just having that, um, you know, uh, fearlessness, I guess, would, would be a helpful um, mindset to have. Yeah, and I think that even if even if you're not fearless, even if you're full of fear all the time, um, we know that people are coming in, you know, a lot of times with you know, very little, if any, technical skills, right? You know, maybe you are uh, an investigative journalist who's really used to asking hard questions of people, you know, digging deep into things, but you just, you know, you download a file and you don't know where it goes, right? It goes somewhere on your computer, you don't know where. Um, and, and we make sure that, you know, we bring everyone along throughout this process. So we understand that people will be intimidated um, right out of the gate. And it's fine. It's fine. Um, it's just the reason why I said earlier, a really good um, kind of thing that a student should bring to the program is a passion for journalism um, is just because it is a difficult program or a challenging program. It is something that asks a lot out of you. Um, and I mean, honestly, if you absorb 30% of the things that we teach you in terms of programming, you're going to probably still be the best data journalist uh, that, that is in the newsroom that you join uh, if it's a smaller newsroom. So uh, no matter what you pull out of it, you're still going to be, you know, end up being successful. But being able to be passionate, being able to be fearless, being able to kind of 
throw yourself into something and kind of trust that it will be okay in the end. It's definitely a great skill to have. Yeah, and I would also add that like some of the students that have been doing really incredible work in the class did not come in with any data background or any coding background. Like just because you know how to code doesn't mean you know how to do data journalism. And just because you're a accomplished journalist doesn't mean you know how to you know do the data part. So, so all that to say, um, students do really well without any coding background or data background. I had a student last semester who uh, came to talk to me in the second semester. He was like, you know, Soma, I came in here, I had some background, a little bit of programming, a little bit of web stuff. And I was just like, I'm going to be the best. This is going to be so easy. I'm going to learn this journalism stuff and everything's going to be great. And I'm just going to crush everybody else. And he was like, no, it's amazing. Like these people who have never coded before because they were just so excited by this, they like leapfrogged him. And he was like, how did you get, how did you get ahead of me? How did you get all these skills without background and coding that I actually have? Um, so I wouldn't say that any of this has to do with, you know, whether you have experience or not, whether you think you're a tech person or a mathy person or anything like that. It's, you know, it's, it's all up in the air. So just have faith in yourself a little bit. Great. And as you both pointed out, you don't have to be a math genius or have a lot of extensive data knowledge to come into this program. And that being said, what do you look for then in a successful application to this program? What are the things you look for in terms of showing a good fit for what we offer in this curriculum? I personally love the personal statement um, where you kind of explain where you came from, what you're interested in, um, and along with that, the uh, inspirational essay, uh, where we make you write a little bit about uh, the kind of work that you want to do, uh, the kind of work that inspires you, just because I feel like that gives us a good idea about whether you basically know what data journalism is or have an idea of what data journalism might be. Um, because, you know, as, as Dremel said, like, having a history of you know being good at math doesn't doesn't necessarily mean anything right like we could go through your your transcripts and see like oh how did they do in all of their technical classes or something like that but for me what's important is just seeing whether you can convey that passion um, and that desire through your essays Great. Um, so that's some great advice. And so what I've done now is I've opened the chat um, and you're welcome to write to Edwin Isaac with any questions that have come up and he will raise some of those uh, momentarily once you start to put those in the chat there. But for now, I have some questions that you've put in your registration form in advance that I'd like to bring up uh, with our uh, two faculty members. Uh, the first is kind of specific, but uh, this person wants to know if spatial data like GIS or satellite imagery is something that you might work with in the MS data kind of uh, program. Yes, uh, so the final semester of the program and also in the first semester of the program, um, we touch a little bit on this. Um, I teach personally a piece of software called QGIS. It is a very common uh, geographic visualization and analysis piece of software used in newsrooms everywhere. Um, and then in the final semester, you have the option uh, to take a full semester long mapping class where you're just doing geographic analysis, uh, where you're building maps where, you know, it, it seems like maybe a very, a very small thing to say making maps right, but there's so much that goes into it so many sources of data, you know, can we look at a satellite imagery of the Amazon and see how deforestation has happened. Uh, or can we, you know, you heard, you know, something exploded somewhere. Can you zoom in from a, a satellite or a high flying plane and get a nice little snapshot of that that you can then annotate and, and put in a news story. So uh, geospatial data is absolutely something that we cover. Uh, and you have the option of going uh, in depth in that final semester as well. Great. In terms of admission, someone's just wondering if they're a mid-career journalist, maybe they've worked for multiple years already in the profession, either in the U.S. or maybe in another country, would this be a good fit in terms of the training they might receive? Yeah, I've got um, students who are a couple years out of undergrad. I've also got students who are definitely mid-career, sort of um, have had, um, you know, really impressive careers as journalists for sometimes more than a decade and just never quite got into the data stuff and, and really recognize the need to and want to. And I think those students also get quite a bit out of it. I think that even beyond the data parts of it, even if you are an experienced journalist, um, seeing journalism through the lens of a journalism school, I feel like can be different than 
the way that you do, you know, everyday journalism. There are more specific things to talk about, things that you might, you know, kind of internalize as a day-to-day -day journalist, but you've never actually thought about why you do it or how you do it. Uh, and they can kind of, you know, knock down those walls and address all the, that as well on the journalism side of things. And I would also add that there are people who have had careers in other things who have sort of are using this program as a way to uh, really switch into becoming a, a journalist when they graduate. And those students also get quite a bit out of it. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple questions from people who are just trying to differentiate this program from the dual MS in computer science and journalism. And from my understanding, you know, that's a program that does require computational knowledge and kind of um, experience undergrad or in grad school prior to coming into that program, because it does start at the graduate level and has computer science courses that are of that level in it already. And that's more for building applications and software, as I understand it, for kind of media outlets, as opposed to maybe using um, data as a reporting tool, like in this program. Is there anything more you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I think that's the the perfect description in that the dual program is very much it's it's you know two separate degrees. You come out with a journalism degree, you come out with a, a degree in computer science, and it's very focused on like the big scale technical things that come along with CS as opposed to using data, using analysis in your everyday reporting. Mm -hmm. I have an interesting question about. Someone's asking, what's the typical life cycle of a story that uses data in journalism? Like, what are the sequence of steps that often you go through when you get like a data flow or a data dump or whatever you like to call it to actually putting that together into an actual story that gets published or, or broadcast at some point? Oh man, uh, I guess I can, I can start with that. There's no typical life cycle. Um, these things can go from uh, something that I did in like half a day, quickly analyzed a data set, wrote it up, you know, a new poll comes out in an election cycle, um, you know, just very quickly sort of published that in half a day to something that where like we build a gigantic database and we're updating it regularly, like a bunch of stories are coming out of it, you know, once, you know, we're, you're going further and further into that beat, like as you build that infrastructure, as you build that pipeline, like more and more stories are coming out of it. Um, there can be things that We'll spend like a month on, you know, a, a, let's say it's a, a one-time story, but we spend a month, you know, really making a interactive graphic where people can dive in and sort of understand the mechanisms of how something happens. Um, so, so I would say there's no there's no typical scale at which data journalism happens. It really runs um, the gamut of all journalism, and, and I think it's part of the reason why I say data journalism is not its own thing. It's just journalism with data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even like from the very beginning, right, do you start with a story or do you start with data? Does your boss just drop a data set on your desk and say, this data set's new, we need a story out of this? Or do you have some sort of idea, you're given an idea and, you know, you're pursuing it, you find some data sets, you glue some things together. Um, are there visuals? Is it a team effort? Is it a solo effort? There's just, there's a lot of moving parts there, a lot of different variables. Mm -hmm. Great. And a question about, you know, if someone's interested in for sure in like in focusing on data, but they also might want to gain some skills and say podcasting or visual storytelling or maybe magazine writing while they're in the program, are there opportunities to learn about more than just kind of the data focused um, curriculum while you're in the program? So yeah, it, it is a very specific program in most of the classes that you have, um, but you do have electives that come up in your second and third semesters. And uh, you do have to take some an elective that is data focused and an elective, and you get to take an elective that is not data focused. Um, so even though um, it is a, a decently long program at three semesters long, there's not that much space where you can kind of stretch out and you know embrace your your podcasting side and things like that. But there is definitely opportunities um, to kind of dip your toes in the water uh, and spend a semester on uh, a course like that. Yeah, yeah. Drummond, did you? Uh, I, yeah, I guess uh, I, I can't speak for all the professors, but in my class at least, um, I do allow for, you know, we're, we're, students are working on a project and I do allow them to sort of submit that in any medium. Uh, just a quick aside, you know, when I was working at 538, we got acquired by ABC News at some point, um, and we started having to ask these questions of like, how do we present data on TV? Um, and, and those are kinds of, you know, data doesn't necessarily have to only be presented in this online or print medium. And so those are things that maybe there's some space when you're doing projects to, and maybe in your thesis to think about. 
Yeah, because the course that I'm teaching next semester, Data Studio, um, students have to produce a, a project start to finish every two weeks, uh, which ends up being a pretty tall order. But the way in which you present your project, you know, it's up to you. So if you want to make a podcast every two weeks, totally fine. I might request you do a little bit of visualization in there. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's plenty of flexibility there. Yeah, I would mention what uh, Soma was talking about for the spring semester, there's this 15 week seminar and production class, which is that elective course where you get to choose amongst all the different options basically available in the Master of Science program. Um, so that could be a podcasting class or a literary journalism class or a class on um, short documentary storytelling or about covering a certain kind of beat like religion or politics or business. So there are ways to kind of get more knowledge about a subject or a medium uh, beyond kind of the data work you're going to be doing too. So that, that's a great opportunity to do that for a pretty long period of time for that, that 15 week span. But great. Um, those are some of the questions we got in advance. Um, Edwin, do you have any questions in the chat currently? Yeah, we have a couple here. Um, first one, Soma kind of addressed as far as comparing and contrasting the, uh, the dual degree program and the data program. Uh, someone uh, from San Francisco asked, and I imagine a lot of you are not in New York, if it's possible to audit a class via Zoom? Currently? Mm. So auditing, I believe, is uh, on a, oh, you mean like uh, like a class visit? So the, student, the students, the, the question said audit, but I imagine you know, a class visit as well. Are you allowing that now? You know, I feel like this hasn't come up, but you know, uh, I feel like that's on on the admission side of things. But I don't see why uh, folks wouldn't be able to do that. It seems perfectly reasonable because travel is not everyone's best friend now, and um, you know, all of our classes are pretty much broken up into availability for uh, if students do have to quarantine and, and hide out at home and things like that. So I believe that's something that we should be able to work out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'd say Sorry, Ross. <laughs> Soma, just to clarify, so this would be via Zoom that they would be able to sit in, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah, because we do have it set up in uh, for our classes. They are kind of recorded and, you know, put out there in case there is someone that does have to quarantine and, and head home, so. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I feel like that's something we should, we can be able to discuss, yeah. Okay, for those requests, I'd say write to apply.journalism at columbia.edu and we can, um, you know, talk to uh, Professor Soma and, and Drew Mill about opportunities where it would make sense for that visit to maybe take place if that's possible. Okay, the next question, are there any courses in the general MS program that are not in the data program? Soma, I think you're muted. I was taught, I was repeating it to myself because I was thinking hard about this. And I mean, I feel like we, we talked about the 15 week seminar and production electives that happen. Um, I feel like there are versions of classes that happen in the general MS program where there are data specific versions. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, reporting one, when you have your reporting class, uh, it is with the other data students. Um, not that it's, you know, data focused or, or anything like that, um, but um, anyone else have an answer to this one? Yeah, I think image and sound is a class in the general MS program where you have the options of audio, video, photo, or data, but you are taking a data course if you're in the data MS program, I believe, for that. And there's a written word class in the MS program where the people in the general MS program have many options in terms of what writing focus they'd like to take for that particular course. But I believe in this program, there's a specific class called writing with data, which is, you know, definitely about using data as a base of storytelling. That's kind of the required course that the data students take. Okay, well, I'm going to direct this to one actually to Ross. This is more of an admissions question. We're going to have an admissions session tomorrow, but a, a student's asking if you can apply to multiple programs. And if you apply to multiple programs, do you have to take the writing test multiple times? Um, the answer to the second part is no. I believe that, you know, if you're thinking of applying to the MS in data journalism program and you're still maybe hoping that you might also be, you know, if they, if a committee feels you're better suited for the MS general program, um, what would happen if our committee feels like an applicant to the data program would be better suited for the general broader program, you could be admitted directly to the MS general program in that case. So in that 
instance, you wouldn't have to apply to say the MS and also the MS in data journalism program. If data is the program that you really want to focus on, I would just apply singularly to that. And then uh, if it turns out we, the admissions committee feels like you're a good fit, you would be admitted to that. Um, but if they felt you were better fit for the general program, you would be admitted to that without necessarily having to apply separately to that program too. Um, I think Taryn, do you have any thoughts about that beyond that? No, that was that was a great explanation, Ross. Mm -hmm. Great. And really, lastly, here, um, and it kind of so many touched upon it. Uh, students asking about really the difference between regular journalism and data journalism. I don't know. Maybe just want to reiterate kind of your main points on that. Sure. Yeah, they're the same. They're the same uh, in terms of what you do. Uh, data journalism is just journalism where you know, you open up your computer, you look at a spreadsheet, you look at a database, you draw some conclusions there. Uh, but in the same way that, you know, you shouldn't go out, talk to someone and consider that uh, accurate reporting for a story, you know, you're going to cross check what they say, do a little more research. It's the same thing with data, right, where you go out, you look at your spreadsheet, but then you go confirm those numbers, you think about, you know, where those numbers came from, um, who's putting them out, why are they putting them out? Uh, and then I guess I guess visualization, you know, comes up in the normal journalism world, uh, but we go a little bit harder on it uh, in terms of uh, focus for uh, data journalism. Yeah, I would say it does help you sort of put your stories in a macro perspective uh, or context. So, for example, if you're interviewing five people, or, or you know, the, the classic example in political journalism is like. We see a lot of yard signs of this one candidate, and right, and then you can ask yourself, like, are yard signs predictive? You know, when you look at all these different data points, which ones are predictive of who's going to win an election? You can sort of put things in that broader context. I think it allows you to also operate a little bit at the at the boundary of like academic, quantitative, social science, and journalism, right? Where you can start to incorporate in my in political journalism. You know, we're looking at political science, for example. Um, but in science journalism, you know, you can start to read papers, you, you have sort of a better um, ability to understand and vet papers as you're reading them for your science journalism. So, so I would say it does bring you maybe a little closer to that boundary between journalism and academia, and it does allow you to sort of put things in a macro context. Okay, thank you. Um, the other questions are more based off, you know, really related to admissions. If you uh, We'll call again. We have an event tomorrow. Uh, that's more about the application process. You can always email us as well. Uh, but if you have any questions while we have our two guests with us with us now, uh, feel free to you know throw those into the chat. But I'm gonna turn it back over to you right now, Russ. Great. Well, I had a question. I know um, we talked a bit about um, you know investigative journalism and the way data plays a role oftentimes in that. And for people who are thinking maybe between, we have an MS uh, that has an investigative specialization and also the data program. How might you differentiate maybe some of the investigative um, opportunities you might get in in this program compared to to that one? So I feel like between investigative and the data program, it, I feel like it's just, it's a difficult decision for someone to make as an individual, right? Because as on the investigative track, um, you will spend more time, you know, covering investigative topics and you will brush up against data. When you're doing this program, you focus mostly on data, which necessarily brushes up against investigative work, right? You know, big document leaks, converting things into, into searchable format. Um, and so I, I would say that this is probably a, a longer discussion that you would end up having, you know, maybe you talk to me, maybe you talk to uh, someone in an investigative program and like a one-on-one -on -one kind, of, kind of thing to, because I, I think that it's... Keep going. My last. I'm actually going to throw. I'm going to throw a link in the chat, um, which is to book like a 30 minute meeting with me if anyone wants to just like schedule a Zoom chat and we can just discuss where you're coming from, what you're interested in doing. You know whether this seems like a solid, you know, kind of kind of match for you. Because um, for something that is like we have a lot of students who come through the program who are interested in doing investigative work, um, and it's just what is the focus on, right? Is, is the focus on general investigative work? Is the focus on being a data person? Great. 
great. And I had a question too. I had the, the, the privilege, I guess, the last summer to you know, stop by and hang out with the data class of 2021 uh, and SOMA in Central Park. Uh, and people are kind of curious a bit about kind of the social life of students or whether it's kind of a collaborative student uh, population. Could you talk a bit about the student community that you interact with in the program? Yeah, so I mean, the, the students, because the data students end up going through the program together and they take a lot of classes together, uh, it's, it's a decently small cohort, you know, around 20 students, um, they become very tight knit. And so there are plenty of, of events and speaker events and lecture series and things like that, where they do uh, interact with plenty of other students and they will take other classes that have other students in them. Uh, but they just they become a very very tight knit community between all of them and they all just they hang out with one another and uh, we have a slack that we use and you know everyone hangs out in the slack for forever and ever and it's just it's very much a community that gets built over the course of these three semesters as opposed to just i went to a school i learned some stuff all right now i'm gone i'm never going to talk to any of these people again um, I was troubleshooting with someone from three years ago today when they were trying to get something set up with Python. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely a community. Great. And I know a lot of the data classes, not all of them, are in the, um, the Brown Institute in our building. Could you maybe tell students or applicants uh, who are thinking about coming here about what the Brown Institute is and also the Tau Center, which I know Drummel is uh, part of as well, and how those uh, offer resources for people interested in data and computational journalism? Seeing as how you're in Brown right now, Drummel, I think you got this one. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I'm uh, the deputy director of the Tau Center. Um, the Tau Center it, it produces sort of research about journalism. Um, so I think they've done a lot of work on like platforms and publishers. You know, what does it mean for Facebook to be involved in news and that sort of thing? Um, and and they, they publish a lot of research that, that is used by, by um, researchers, academics, journalists. Uh, et cetera, and help us understand sort of the, the environment that we're operating in. Um, I don't know as much about Brown Institute, um, but you know, they, I know they produce um, sort of some really cool software projects. They have this magic grant where if you have a cool idea that's sort of at the intersection of, of journalism and, and software, um, you know, you can, you can apply for a grant and kick that off. Um, I believe they're also, it's affiliate, it's like a, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a Stanford collaboration, right? Um, between Columbia Journalism and Stanford Engineering. Um, so, so if you are interested in sort of novel, innovative, new things at the intersection of, of these fields, um, Brown and Tau are great resources to sort of pursue those ideas. I would say the best thing about it is it's a physical space. Like it's not just a program that is run out of the school, but there is literally like right on the other side of Drummill's camera is just a place where all of this stuff happens. Uh, and so it is often the room where people in the data program will end up kind of hanging out, working on, you know, projects together, working on their homework assignments, uh, kind of studying together. And so there is a lot of cross pollination between people who are working at the centers or teaching at the centers, because um, you, you know, you'll see them just hanging out all the time, right? Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a great resource that is a physical space, which makes it uh, way better than just being, you know, some sort of idea that exists in the world. Yeah, and I, and I guess I'd add that there's also some research going on here. Like I'm working on projects about text analysis and journalism, and like that's not a tool that's frequently used in our field yet. Um, and and we're I'm working on sort of ways to uh, make that more useful. And so you know there are sort of these things that maybe you are are not as much in the newsroom, but are sort of baking here um, in in research efforts as well. Um, and you you can sort of get to get a glimpse into that as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's an exciting space, and I know um, Mark Hansen, who directs the Brown Institute, often has um, some uh, you know optional, not required, but like uh, statistics uh, breakfasts and other events where you can learn a lot about some of the cutting edge work in computational journalism. If you just want to get your feet wet in that and and learn a bit, um, there's a lot of opportunities year round too, on top of the stuff you're doing with Drew Mill and uh, Soma throughout the year too. So um, lots of opportunities for sure. Great. And any other questions, Edwin, or um, we all set. Yeah, a couple more. Um, is interactivity something that data journalists worry about? And if so, are there any classes that offer uh, anything that has to deal with interactive visualization? 
Yeah, so I have historically taught the interactive biz class, uh, and it's what people are so excited about because you spend all of this time doing data analysis, you spend all this time making static charts, and you're just like, I want something that moves. I want to put my mouse over something and I want a pop up to come up, and you're so excited about it. And then we get into class, and on the very first day, I say, I'm sorry to inform you that none of your readers will ever interact with anything that you make. It's the golden rule of building interactives. This is very rare that they will actually hover, that they will actually click, they will actually do anything like that. Um, but it is a lot of fun and it does open up a lot of doors for very big like exploratory projects and very exciting projects and you know a lot of award-winning projects. Um, so yes, we definitely cover things like web applications and D3, um and just a, a million things we do some uh you know scrolly telling stuff like that hey russ over back over to you russ great well if that's it for the questions from the chat for now um as edwin mentioned tomorrow at we're having a um kind of an overall kind of introduction to our programs as well as the admissions process and financial aid opportunities so if people are able to register through the link i put in the chat you can join that one we're also be having some other upcoming events so we'll be reaching out to you via email about other opportunities to learn about different programs and more of the application questions you might have as you go forward so you're welcome to go there and you're also welcome to write to us at apply.journalism at columbia.eu with any questions you have uh, about maybe having a class visit and any other opportunities uh, we didn't go over today. So we are really happy you were able to join us from wherever you are around the world. Um, you have some great questions. We're happy to, to answer all of those. And I'd like to thank uh, Soma and Drew Mill for uh, joining us today and um, Edwin for moderating the chat. Um, and definitely reach out to us anytime. We're happy to chat more with you in the coming weeks. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks.